Happy Tuesday, smart sleepers. It's a couple days before Thanksgiving if you are in the United States, so it feels like a holiday week to me. But I'm excited to go live today and talk to you about something that I actually just wrote about in my local newspaper and that I got a big response to. So this really hit home for a lot of people. And what I'm going to be talking about is cortisol imbalance or cortisol dysregulation. And to best explain this, I want to um, pull up a, well, I might not be able to now. Well, I am going to post a graphic under this video so that you can look at it while you are listening and um, understand a little more what I am talking about. So to start off explaining, we want your cortisol levels to be like Goldilocks. You know, Goldilocks likes things just right, as we all do. Not too hot, not too cold, not too big, not too small, just right. We want the same thing with our cortisol levels in our body and with all of our hormones in our body, really. Um, but we want to be in balance or what we call homeostasis. So if you imagine this bell curve, if you're listening right now and you don't have the graphic, um, the bell curve on the homeostasis is going to sit on the left side of that curve right in the middle of the downward slope. So say the bell curve is here, homeostasis is right here. And you will see that on the green box on the chart. So when a stressful event happens, you move up to the top of that belt of the bell curve and in what we call the acute phase. So this means that your cortisol is spiked and that could be from a bear chasing you in the mountains or being frantic about a deadline and rushing around or your blood sugar drops too low. So there are many different mental and physical things that could cause cortisol to go up or you to be in this stress response. And so your body releases cortisol to deal with that stressor. Now, when you're in that acute phase, you feel really good. You have energy, you're focused. Um, you feel less pain because cortisol is a painkiller. And so that's because your body is helping you prepare to survive something, to, you know, fight or flight, to flee or fight something. And so it's going to give you energy into your extremities and increase your heart rate and blood pressure and your focus um, so that you can either get that task done or survive um, a physical stressor. Now, Many of us feel this way often in our 20s, even if we're under a lot of stress, say a stressful job or um, worried about money or over exercising, any of those things can cause a lot of stress, but we actually feel good when it's happening. And so, you know, it's in our 20s that we can cause a lot of our stress on our bodies and still feel fine, like staying up late, drinking too much, exercising all day long, and then you still have energy to do it again the next day. So if you're under stress all the time, you stay in that acute phase and you never go back down to homeostasis or balance. So again, this could be emotional stress like losing a loved one or physical stress like a pathogen in your gut. But eventually, if you're up here all the time, at some point your body isn't going to be able to compensate and you're going to slide down the other side of the bell curve into what we call the compensatory phase. So we call it that because your body is trying to compensate, but it's not very well able to at that point. So you're not responding to stress as well anymore and you can probably start to tell. You're not feeling like you did great like you did in that acute phase. So your steroid hormones like DHEA, even sex hormones like progesterone and estrogen and testosterone start getting out of balance at this point. And so you can start to have many vague but common complaints. So nothing that your doctor would necessarily take seriously, but like you don't feel like you have a lot of energy all the time or you aren't digesting food well. 
You might be getting sick more often because your immune system isn't that strong. And if you get tests done by your doctor because you don't feel good, they're gonna come back as normal. And you tend to probably self-medicate with things like caffeine to get energy, you know, trying supplements, trying over-the-counter drugs to, to feel better. Now, at this point, it's actually going to take more than just supplements, diet, and exercise to get back in balance. So you could be eating healthy and getting plenty of exercise and taking the latest superfood supplements, but it's not all going to be enough to help. You've been under stress for so long that your body can't adapt anymore. And you really have to get rid of those stressors and work to get your body back in balance. Now, what's interesting is that cortisol levels look the same when you're in homeostasis in that green box and when you're in the compensatory phase, which is that, I wanna make sure, that orange box. So they're directly across each other um, on the bell curve. So that's why if you get blood work done for cortisol, it's gonna come back in the normal range. But you know it's not normal, you know something's wrong because you don't feel well, you don't feel normal, you don't feel like you're in balance. Now, many of my clients come to me and they are in this compensatory phase. So they don't feel good anymore, they know that something isn't right, but their labs look normal from the doctor, but they don't feel no normal. And so they are having sleep problems and possibly other minor symptoms but nothing they've tried so far has helped. Now, if your body doesn't get back in balance, you're eventually going to slide into exhaustion. So that is that red scary box there. And as you can imagine, this doesn't feel well at all. At this point, your body enters a catabolic state, which means that it's breaking down. So you may have many chronic symptoms and you're actually seeking alternative or medical treatment for these. You might be diagnosed with a disease or disorder or two, including chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or any kind of disorder or disease, um, but you're pretty much tired all day and you don't have energy to exercise. You're in that exhaustive phase and you're exhausted. Now, if you are experiencing any symptoms at all, including sleep problems, that means that you have cortisol imbalance and that you're nowhere near perfect health. And the longer you wait to address it, the longer and harder it's going to take to get back in balance. So my clients who are in the exhaustive phase take longer to improve, but if they stick with the program, they do get better. So that's the good news. So I hope this explains how this chronic stress affects the body and why there's no quick fix to get back in balance. A comprehensive hormone test, like the Dutch test that I do, um, tells us what's going on with, with your cortisol and how it's being used in your body. And knowing what stage of cortisol imbalance you're in will help me know what changes to suggest and how to help you get back in balance. So that is why this is one of the core tests that I do for everyone, because if you're having sleep problems, you have cortisol imbalance for sure, as well as other sex hormone balance as well. But if you can't sleep, there is a reason why and we can find out what it is and fix it. So thanks for listening. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions about uh, what I talked about with cortisol or anything else about your sleep. I'm happy to chat anytime. Have a great Thanksgiving if you're celebrating that and have a great rest of your week no matter what.